Jesus broke the rules. Okay, too. then let us just admit that we're asking people to subversively build the kingdom. That's missionary gold. There is no way that we can't, as an organization, do th these kinds of things. That is the way to get to people in the 21st century through missionary work. If you think you're going to make missionary work work by going and knocking doors, you're wrong. People join the church generally when they make a solid connection with another Latter-day Saint or even more so multiple Latter-day Saints who are invested in the things that they're invested in. For this guys who like sounds love music, wicked! Dude, it'd be amazing! He's gonna have to call the church office building and we all know exactly what they're gonna say. What a great way for you to have your kid try different things. People you really bond with aren't just people who share your value. The state president, all he has to do is say, we'll help promote this. Look out at the world around us. There are people who have interests and they are bored and they are looking for human connection and community. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I'm your host, Cardinalis. I'm joined in the studio by Brittany the Shadow, as well as via the interwebs by Jonah Barnes and Jacob Hansen of Thoughtful Faith, who has a wow, this is a pretty uh this is a pretty saucy thumbnail that this will revolutionize the church. Are you trying to start a revolution or do you have an idea that will revolutionize the church? I had to bring my wife, Brittany, along to hear this because it sounds like you got a pretty big idea. What is it? Jacob Hansen, go. You know me. I'm the revolutionary here. <laughs> so here's what uh, I'm thinking. So I, it, it kind of goes back to working with young men now uh, in the church, in the youth programs for over a decade now. And I've worked in different stakes, both here uh, where I'm in Nevada and then also in Arizona. So I've been around, I've seen kind of different, uh, different layouts of the church in different locations. And there's, as you consider the young men's program, for a lot of us that are in the young men, we got rid of the scouting program and there's a sense of like, uh, that that created sort of a really nice structure for any of its issues. It created a, a good structure for the church. So a lot of people right now are trying to figure out, like, what do we do in the current environment with the young men? And I'm going to start because this goes beyond the young men's organization. Is that your euphemism for the floundering that I would say <laughs> our young men's program is in? But OK, you can whatever that that was much prettier and sweeter smelling, much nicer. Yeah, yeah that was much nicer. Well, they they, they did come out with with a program that was supposed to be goal oriented and some can of you that. Name I, don't, it? I don't. Can you name it? No, they didn't. I'm not going to say it's it, been branded very well. But, uh, OK. <laughs> Utter failure but, is maybe the thought that came to mind, but no, I'm just kidding. But. Well, well, here's the thing. You guys, you guys were in the young men's program. Like, what are the things that you remember most that were the most impactful things? You think the things that like you really remember and think about, what were they? Um, the naked polar bear swim in the Pacific coast. And <laughs> wow. You are he runs into the ocean in the morning at 6 a.m. You was are that part of like a, like a high adventure trip or something. Y'all did just that. A, yeah. It was a hazing at Camp Merriweather. You had to get up one night at one morning. Everybody just runs to the surf and jumps in. You're freezing and you're red all over. And it was great. That wow, you are from the Pacific Northwest. Holy smoke, yeah, that would yeah. never fly in the warm waters of Southern California. Yeah, like, Southern California, it's we like, were like, you know, yet? snorkeling. We were snorkeling next to manta rays. I don't know, are our water is oh, that warm? Geez. Um, well, during when you get the summer, uh, during the summer, they're actually slightly colder because you get the down currents from Alaska. They will get warmed by the summer sun and the fact that it is summer. But then also every once in a while you get lucky in the winters and you get updrafts from like the the, the, the southern tropical climate. I don't know. And, I'm scared of sharks. So I never really get yeah. in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, that's we, true. Lo we lost boys. We lost boys <laughs> with those polar bear swims and you Californians. Are like, yeah, you're like. Your oh, parents had to sign so a waiver cool. like, we're going to swim in the ocean. Yeah. So anyway, what do we like? Uh, at the drop of the hat, I could think it was awesome because there was first off uh, 
uh, potential for community. There was the Boy Scout uh, actual troop itself that you had friends in, but there was also the Boy Scout basketball league that we participated in. There was also tons of camps where we made friends from other kids in the area. It was phenomenal socially and as a sense of community. It was great spiritually also. You actually had to ask big questions because if you mm -hmm. go to Yosemite and you see Half Dome Peak and you look at something that profound, you can't help but think big questions. And it grew me spiritually, not just in the trite little Mormon way, like, oh my gosh, like, I love the book of Mormon now. It was actually like, whoa, I am nothing compared to the grandeur of this thing that I just saw. You know, it was a humbling experience. So there was that spiritual growth, right? And then the third is the practicality of it. I learned so many things. When you get your Eagle Scout, there's 21 different little things that you become a mini expert in like everything from fingerprinting on the low end to not tying on the mid end to all of a sudden more profound things like how to put together a giant project like your Eagle Scout project. So yeah, I could name 15 ways that being parts of the, a part of that program as a young man was wildly beneficial. And yeah, yeah. and same thing for me. I mean, I loved it. My whole family went through the scouting program. My dad is Scout Master forever. And uh, the thing I remember, I think it was you make these boys go off on these campouts and they're like, they like kind of want to, they kind of don't want to, but they kind of want to. And you make them go out and do these hard things. And they look back and they're like, Oh, we did some hard things. And then you're around the campfire at night and they look up at the stars and they start to, after everything's died down and it's way too late and someone goes, so is there really a God? And then you have these like really profound conversations. With Atheism cannot boys. exist in the face of the beauty of nature. Yeah, and it, and that's what it does. It puts you right out there yeah. in nature, and so it, it was a breaks, marvelous. It kind, of, it kind of breaks you down too in those sort of those sort of environments. But and as I, uh, the high adventure trips were always something that everybody talks about. Whether hey, you're, hey, I wait, have wait a second. My we, ex Mormon friends say the same we thing. Skip somebody. We're a bunch of misogynists that forgot to ask Brittany, <laughs> Brittany oh. about her stargazing, uh, in the lean to that she made herself. <laughs> oh wait, Brittany skipped out on every girls' camp. Because <laughs> you did? Well, when I was a young man, <laughs> those log cabins—they're roughing it in the log cabins. You know what I'm saying? I was a dancer. Well, I always had dance summer camps during girls' camp. I went my first year, um, but I didn't go any other year. <laughs> Aww, Let's be honest. Awesome. You win your first year. The first night you absolutely hated it. And you're like, mom, come pick me up. We didn't <laughs> camp as a family. I didn't grow up camping. It was not our thing. Actually, it's it's well, well, you're going to see you're going to see that what I talk about when I get further into this, it, it actually takes into account Brittany's sort of a situation here. OK, because okay? we have different interests. But what what happened here is that we all have these things from young men's. Even when you talk to people who have left the church. They will talk positively about their high adventure trips. Uh, most yeah. of the young men will. And they'll say, that that was cool. Like, I, I remember going out there with all those guys. We backpacked for a week through the mountains, whatever. It was amazing. And I started thinking, okay, well, obviously, there's the high adventure stuff. But I, I started to boil it down into what is it that really made those things special? Because there's a bunch of different things that we do in the church. But those were always something that really worked. They worked well. And what they did is they got people together together. And it got them involved in a shared activity that they were doing together as a group in something that uh, at least generally they had some interest in. The young men actually, there are activities that you learn when you're planning for the youth that they show up to because their parents make them. And then there are other ones that they actually are kind of like, no, this is one of the fun ones. Like we're going backpacking. Like this is cool. They might even invite their non-member friends who might be interested in backpacking. Right. Yeah. And so I started thinking, well, what if, you know, just as a church, we just had like an adventure group that was organized by the stake that three times a year, two or three times a year, let's say, let's say twice a year, they do like a bigger adventure trip, but then they have like two or three other just like overnighters. And in those overnighter camps, it's sort of like you're learning about outdoor skills to get prepared to go on the big adventure trips. Right. And it isn't something that is forced on all the young men. It's like, you're expected to go to this. It's the parents in the stake would be able to say, yeah, I want to register my kid for the adventure group in the stake. Mm -hmm. And so then the kids that, you know, want to do it, will will sign up. And not only that, you can then say, and you can invite your non-member friends, right? And, to and join assuming, our, our adventure group. I'm assuming that the nice thing about this is 
that then because every ward might have like two or three really high adventure guys but then like there's the one dude that's like a painter and he's not in to the high adventure stuff and then there's like the jock that may not even be into the high adventure stuff either but man he'll wake up at 6 a.m to go play basketball with the old guys and then there's like the total video game nerd who's like learning to code and you have to drag along to the high adventure things and he benefits from it in the same way that all of us benefit from like general education those first two years of college but, but he's he, not going to have a profound experience but so that's he, not what he's into. he's less likely to have that right. profound experience yes so so the nice thing about this if i'm smelling what you're stepping in is that if the stake would take it upon themselves to have interest groups then the individual wards could have their kind of mandatory for everybody activities but then people could really flourish both socially and um, practically in a community that loves their thing because there would be a high adventure group but then there would also be the basketball group or the sports group right that would go and sign up this uh quarter for softball in the city league and then go sign up this quarter for ping pong in the rec center and then there would also be an art group or a theater group or am i am i am i interpreting this correctly yeah so so what happened was is i started thinking about this adventure group and i'm just going to start with that because you're right you're getting a little bit ahead of, of where okay. i'm going with this but the basic idea is is it and then you could have like a junior adventure group for like you know, the the younger kids, kind of like how you had the, the younger scouts and then the older scouts. But the the older scouts, like you could do some really awesome adventures. You know what I mean? And they'd have to like, maybe they'd have to earn their way into the older adventure group. But the basic idea here is that this group, this adventure group could be run by guys in the stake that want to do adventures, like older yeah. guys, right? Like, like the dudes that have the boats and the can-ams and like dude, you, the, and I'm the telling motorcycles. You, you could get guys that would be like, I want to be involved in the adventure group and yeah. the leader. And all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. you got all of these young men that are, that are interested in adventures bonding with older men that are also are interested in adventures. And all of a sudden, this is like the coolest thing ever. And any kid in the community who wants to come and join with the Latter-day Saint kids to go on this, they're going. And then we incorporate spirituality things. And so anyway, there's this whole vision that kind of comes out of this is like, man, we can make something really awesome that that you'd have kids that are interested in it and then their uh, leaders that are interested in it. And it's something that comes from the bottom up. Right. Well, so why aren't we so, doing it this way? Well, 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 hold on. We can get to maybe why not. But let's just finish the vision here. OK, cool. Here's the thing. Also, now this one, we're, we're kind of taking it from the top down. We're saying the stake was, hey, we, we should create this adventure group. I actually was thinking about this idea and I backed up and I said, no, 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 what we should do is this. The stake presidency should say, if you have an idea for a group, come to us. Hmm. Tell us about what you want to start and you're going to lead it. You bring the, the three people that are totally into fly fishing and you say, we want to start a a stake fly fishing group and twice a year we're going to go on a fly fishing trip with a bunch of guys that are into that in the stake people can sign up they can bring their non-member friends and there will be some spiritual element to it some devotional some lesson something that's a part of it that because it is a church function and we're going to go and do that right now here's another one we could do and this is Brittany, right like young moms with kids so erica my wife she got involved when we first moved uh, to here to Reno in a um, a Christian moms group. Mm -hmm. It was they get together once every couple of months for like a luncheon thing. They have a little lesson. They have some like games and get to know you things. And I think like child care is provided or something. And it's just a chance for these women to get together. But the thing is, they're all like they're all in the same boat. These are all women who have like young kids. And she made a bunch of friends out of it. And she was just thinking, you know, we have our relief society. We talk about it. Well, guess what? In our relief society, there are a couple of young moms in our ward. But most of the ladies are older or old women. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, it's very hard for a young mom who wants to go out and make friends if there are only three other moms in the, in the group. And yeah, those three moms share her values. But do they share her interests? And so if you want to find people, because you have to have two things, like the people you really bond with, aren't just people who share your values. The church does a great job of that. You need two ingredients. You need people who share your values and your interests. And if you get a group of Latter-day Saints who share the same values and then share similar interests, 
you're going to have people develop deep well, and meaningful friendships and community. That's why yeah. the athletic, uh, the, the the church athletic program was so successful for so long before the church kind of divested from it. Because the only people that show up to church basketball on Thursday night, guess what? They're basketball players. They're athletes. They're dudes that want to bond around a competitive game that's getting played. You know? And then you feel bad for the other kids, like the kid in my ward who literally was like, yeah, it's basketball season. He's like, it sucks. I just I just don't go to young men's during, you know, during basketball season because he's not into that. Well, yeah, but see, then they flourish during the summer when there's road shows. But if you have a really crappy non theatrical ward, see, I it, and that depended again on the state president. Like when I grew up, uh, you know, here in Los Angeles, there's entertainment industry people everywhere. So you literally have the same guy that's constructing sets for Wicked at the Pantages Theater, you know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the pews on Sunday saying, sure, I'll come over on Monday and build a set for you guys, you know, and we have tons of editors, directors, uh, actors, voiceover actors, so on and so forth. Um, and if you have a stake president that's, uh, you know, amicable and likes the idea we would have some phenomenal theatrical productions put on in our court cultural hall that guess what has a stage, but then others, man, you get some poor accountant or some poor insurance guy that does not see the vision. And yeah, <laughs> all of the theater kids, they're just forgotten for like four years, man. But this seems like if we could make it a program, uh, kind of like in the U S government, you know, certain programs, like, I don't know, the army doesn't fail because it's just like, a thing every year that's in the budget that you have to do. It seems like you're suggesting we make some of these groups so they kind of um, operate independently and don't fail, correct? Yeah, okay, so here's one. Uh, choir, right? We have like a state choir and stuff and it's sort of there, but what if we put together a choir group that yes, there was part of that was the state choir, but they also go out and participate in local choir events and that we actually put together like a legit choir Oh, and they don't idea. have to be and, Mormon. Like, why don't we have, don't have to be a Latter-day Saint? No, yeah. we get a bunch of non-members who are coming into this thing. And all of a sudden, remember, look out at the world around us. There are people who have interests and they are bored and they are looking for human connection and community. Why don't we, as builders of Zion and the kingdom of God, bring people together? And the thing is, is when we bring them together, we have to bring them by their interests. What do people already have a passion for? If your passion is for raising your children and bonding with other young mothers, well, then why don't we put together like these kind of things that would appeal to a young mom Dude, tell or me things this. that appeal to the choir kid or the king that appeals to the theater kids or or we could totally do this and we could staff it with people both inside the church. We could even have leaders of these programs that are non-members. Like why sure. can't they have yoga in the morning? And I've always said this about the choir. I've said, why are we always struggling for already overworked members to be in the volunteer choir when there are thousands of, at least here in Los Angeles, thousands of ex choir and musical participants that would love to participate in a once a month singing basic Christian cool chorale music. You know, like if we made flyers in my war boundaries, just printed out like 10,000 flyers and it was very simple. It said, hey, you know, we're putting two uh, ward choirs together. Let's just say, you know, in the uh, Los Angeles 15th ward is assembling this year's uh, choir. We're going to have two choirs, one that is uh, performs on odd uh, Sundays, one that performs on even Sundays, 50 people each come in audition, you know, um, no experience necessary. But think how many people that are now like Jonah, who used to be a rock star, but forsook the lifestyle for that of a peaceable baker with six kids. Think how much <laughs> if he weren't a member, he'd be like, dude, wait, so I just got to show up on Sundays and we practice for an hour and then we might sing. That's awesome. I'll do that. You know, yeah, all over it. Yeah. And then uh, like that, that would be an amazing outreach. Uh, it would be an amazing musical experience. Like, this is the future, baby. And I feel like I've been screaming this for the choirs from the rooftops. I wonder, why are we doing this? What's holding us back, dog? Here, let, let me let me push back on this just a little bit. Let me okay. just, because I wore the flannel today, Jacob, okay? Yeah. So why don't you just, <laughs> why don't you just back off for a minute, okay? I'm the Matt Walsh of this episode here, Jacob. So, so I think that uh, there... 
these are awesome ideas. I love them. It could be two different things we're talking about because there's one thing in particular, one way in which young men differ from the rest of the body of the church. Uh, when I was in Arizona, there was an activity that our stake would do and they would, they would like, I think they actually flew the boys up to St. George and just like for their super activity or whatever and like toured around the temple and ate ice cream and stayed in a hotel and then came back and the stake had to come down and say, or I think a, a, a lo- local authority had to come down and say, stop doing this because it was it's privately co- paid, right? Cause it costs, it costs a ton yeah. of money and you're not challenging the boys. You're just entertaining the boys. And so the theme was, was that young men don't need to just be entertained. They need to be challenged. And so how do you balance their interests? Like, Hey, I want to go on this backpacking trip, but some boys are like, Oh, I'm not super excited about it. Like, I think, I think that that is the, that is the role to some extent of the parents. The parents are to sign their kid up for it to say, Hey, you should do this. Like, but you also should recognize that not everyone's going to be able to do it. By the way, maybe that's, yeah. Sorry. I just had this thought with the interest groups too. What a great way for you to have your kid try different things to see what they like without Absolutely. spending a lot of money, you know, doing this for a season, like go try this and go try this and meet new friends in different areas and maybe you'll find a passion. Yeah, the, scu- the scuba diving interest group would explode with 50 people in the beginning. Might only end with 10, you know what I'm saying? But like <laughs> it would explode. Well, no, no, that- yeah. Like, like, okay, so, so get this. Here's my basic thesis behind this, Jonah, because it goes way beyond the young men. Okay. Here's the problem. In modern society, people feel disconnected. They long for community and belonging. They want to belong to a group and humans connect when engaging in a shared interest or passion together. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that human connection fosters the spirit. There's a reason that when guys go to BYU as non-members, they all end up, or men or women, not just guys, but when people go to BYU as non-members, they end up joining the church. And it's because they end up doing things, pursuing their academic interests, other social interests that they have surrounded by Latter-day Saints. If you get a bunch of Latter-day Saints together who have a shared passion or interest, and they invite non-members to join and, and come and join with them, it will be a powerful experience. Do you know what this sounds like, Jacob? Dare I say, inclusivity? <laughs> it's the it's the right kind of inclusivity. Yeah, when, uh, it's the right kind of. It, they mean include the ideology. They don't mean include people well, in, the, and so, in the building of Zion. So here's my question, man. Here's my question. Like, really, what is stopping us from doing this? Because to a certain extent, it almost sounds like you're describing the church in the 1920s and the 1930s before we let the church office building and the bureaucrats and the lawyers take over. Because the number well, one thing I think is I've suggested hundreds of these kind of groups. And it, I, and I'm not going to start a moan fest about the bureaucracy of our church. We are anybody that listens to our show is already familiar with that rant. I'll just save us the five minutes. But I will say, like, my heart yearns to see this vision that you're describing completed. I, I, I think so what if the guys go and they just tour St. George Temple and they think, wow, what a beautiful building and look around and say, oh, what beautiful grounds. And they slowly start to realize that, wow, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints makes gorgeous sacred spaces. I wonder why they consider this sacred. Like you can't stand on those temple grounds and not start thinking pure and beautiful and spiritual thoughts. So I I always have said, sometimes people have to go to church for the wrong reasons before they can come for the right reasons, you know? And sometimes young men need to go on that backpacking trip just because they're like, oh, hey, it kind of sounds fun and my boys are going to be there, right? Who cares? What church leader would say no to that? And isn't even just basic community something godly enough to warrant a trip? I don't care if they're going I, I, to the I arcade. I think that's the window. That is the way to get to people in the 21st century through missionary work. If you think you're going to make missionary work work by going and knocking doors, you're wrong. People join the church generally when they make a solid connection with another Latter-day Saint or even more so multiple Latter-day Saints who are invested in the things that they're invested in. So how do we make this care- happen? Who's the yes person? Is this like well, a well, state? I want to I want to get I, I, I want to stop before we even get to that because there's a okay. part of this vision that I think will help maybe overcome the burden of how do we get this approved? Oh, and so before, one thing is, is that before, oh, you, before you say that though, too, I also want to know before we move on to this, Brittany, 
Mm-hmm. What would your special interest That's what I was going to ask. Be? Oh, that's what <laughs> you were going to ask? Okay. Yeah, I was going to ask too. Okay, well, you can ask it, Jacob, being such a gentleman. All right, what, what, what is, what, Brittany, what, what is, do you have any interests that you have that you would love to do with other people? Mm. No, I'd have to like people first. But, okay. um, <laughs> well, you can, yoga, you've always wanted I do, to do. I do love yoga. Um, Erica would be there with you. I'm telling like you. If you guys put baths, together a yoga group, like meditation, there. like that kind of thing, I think is cool. Um, cooking. I like cooking. I'm not great at Bristol's it, but I'd like to, you know, learn. A steak cooking group? Yes. Where you like bring home like freezer meals, you know, and you just have like a bunch of meals you can just take out. And I think that would be cool. Um, hmm, What else? Well, you were, I mean, you were basically a semi-professional ballerina. Would you be interested in in dance? No, No, you're kind of past that. My back hurts. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm old now. Yeah, that's funny. (laughs) But, but, but here, so how about this one? Uh, And maybe not you, Brittany, because you weren't so into camping and stuff. Yeah. But like. Uh, how about a women's adventure group? Yeah. I, I know Erica say, would like, be all I over that. would want to do like river rafting. I was always so jealous that the boys got to do like river rafting trips. And we had like, we're going to make a babysitting well, kit. How, we about were- a, how about a young women's adventure group? Yeah. That'd be cool. Okay. Yeah. Like, but hold on. Hold on. But patriarchy and horses. Okay. okay we were defending the patriarchy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. And we were keeping the horses... Uh, just for us, okay? Yeah. So none of this girls going oh, river rafting. Oh, horseback riding. I want to do horseback riding. Oh, yeah. That would be fun. Well, I mean, there, the, the, the reality is the possibilities are endless, but here is the thing. How do you get this to actually happen? Well, yeah. it, it doesn't come from the top down. It comes from the bottom up. Mm-hmm. The idea is, is that you approach the stake presidency and they say, tell me about the group you're going to start. And you come in with three people. We're going to be the leaders of this group. And what we're going to do, like, let's say it's the young women or the the women's adventure group. You get three really like outdoorsy women that are super into this. Mm -hmm. And they say, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put on two activities a year that women can sign up for. um, And we have a limit of so many or however they got to do it. They got to get more leaders or whatever, however they do it. But we're going to do these two cool adventures every year for women. Right. Yeah. And maybe they get so much popularity that they have to do like four and have a different person lead each one of these different women's adventures. And you can only go on one a year, you know, whatever. There are logistical things you have to work out, but that would be on the people who are volunteering to make this happen. The idea is, is like for for me, uh, I'm a nerd. I like airsoft. So mm-hmm. I'd start a church airsoft thing where we would uh, put on two activities a year or one a quarter or something where we'd get together dads and their sons and their daughters anybody wants to play to come out and play airsoft that's not nerdy that's right wing violence but (laughs) you you can keep going (laughs) i mean the the possibilities are endless but the idea is is that the state president all he has to do is say this he says like we'll help promote this yeah Uh, what the stake is essentially doing is just getting the word out and they know a couple things about the program there are some basic so there's going to be something spiritual about it the missionaries will be there. They'll they'll give a, a spiritual thought, whatever. Um, and there will be a and the church will be used to kind of find to say, hey, on our website, the stake website, we have a list of these different sort of activity groups that you can sign up for, right? Whether that be basketball, flag football, an adventure group. Uh, how about this one, Brittany? Mm-hmm. A play date and games at a park for young moms to come and get to know you and kind of get to know the kids and let them all play yeah, right because yeah. you're new to the area and and you don't know anybody and this would be a way that you could kind of connect with other people in your similar life situation instead of ending up in some ward where there's one other young mom besides you and then a bunch of old ladies right and you know what that's missionary that's missionary gold a young yes. a young mom's group is missionary gold young moms or or how about this fly fishing group Okay, you got some fly fishing group. You have some guy that I know who's a buddy of mine who loves fly fishing, would never come to church. Okay, if I invited him to church, he'd never come. But if I say a bunch of guys from my church are going to go fly fishing and we got this special like guide or boat that's going to take us to this one place that's really great or whatever, he's going to come with. Well, and even if he's not interested in necessarily the spiritual aspect of the church, like he's not just at home 
like getting drunk watching ESPN 17's pro bass fishing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and uh, he's making uh, friends. Can we? He, he's making friends with other wholesome dudes that are going to help just elevate our society that one little notch higher. Every time we bulldoze a park in order to build a shopping mall, there's one notch of the social fabric that goes down. Every time we divest from one of these programs, there's 10 people that are underserved and now the, the, the you know that, that tide goes down we would slowly start rising the tide and improving the social fabric everywhere dare i say fulfilling prophecy in scripture saying we should be like the salt that gives the whole entire plate its savor as jesus christ commands okay so let me let me just offer a you know an obstacle like how do we overcome because i love all this okay so guys guys i'm just trying to i'm just trying to help us feel the idea out here okay i'm in the flannel shirt so i gotta yeah. be a little bit you know questioning presuppositions here so i think one here's one reason why an obstacle i think would be the people who would do this are already have three callings the 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 most reliable and active and energetic and enthusiastic people in the church are already on a high council or I disagree an elders corn presidency and they're already just slammed. I like disagree. If, if I, I were to come and say, Hey, we're all going to go fly fishing. Nine out of the 10 guys would Dude, say, no, I've got, I've got, got five. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to mutual- push back. I'm going to push back really hard because here's what's going to happen. You know, that guy who's over there sitting in the corner that never participates in elders quorum and basically is just showing up. He has a passion. He has something that he will get up at six in the morning to go do because he just is that into it. All you got to do is figure out what that thing is. And if, and he will do it. And not only, not only will he do it, he will show up and be the leader of the group and help to organize the activities for the other people who share his passion. Dude, I've got like, we've got probably how many in our ward, Brittany? We've got probably five to 10 guys. There's, there's plenty of ladies. I don't know uh, in the Relief Society, but I know there's probably five to 10 guys that I see on occasion because we have part member families where maybe the husband isn't a member. He's kind of just like this agnostic, agnostic, you know, basic guy. That's cool. He shows up to the Father's Day activities where we feed spaghetti to all the fathers and he'll show up to like the Christmas thingies and kind of, you know, the obligatory stuff where there's going to be something going on. But this brother's not going to be coming to church every Sunday. All right. And when he does, he kind of just sits in back nods and he's like, "Okay, this was an enjoyable Easter service. Can we go now, honey? And they're first in the parking lot after it's over. Right. If that brother who absolutely loves lacrosse, you know what I'm saying, played it in college, doesn't even realize that's a new sport sweeping through California, and all of a sudden there's a lacrosse group, he would easily run that group. I know five part member family dads that are hardcore engineers, welders, uh, super cool high adventure dudes who don't give a crap about church, but would never miss a high adventure special group would never my, miss a fishing group. My ex Mormon brothers, I think would literally help lead high adventure trips, even though they like, like my, my older brother has a bunch of sons. He loves the outdoor skiing, all this kind of stuff. And he genuinely feels like he worries that like, my boys aren't getting that same sort of community young men experience that I had. And even though I no longer a part of the church, that's an aspect of the church that I really miss. And my thing is this, we don't have to go into this with an agenda. It's like, oh, this is all just a secret ploy to like get them into the church. No, you want to actually build Zion. You just actually want to connect with other human beings and love them. And the way that men, especially, and sorry, Brittany, I don't want to cut you out on this because the th- there is a difference here. Patriarchy though. and horses. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys don't bond with other bo- guys by getting together and talking about their feelings. Yeah. The way that guys bond, you, you go watch, like people talk about men don't show emotion. Go watch a bunch of guys who just won a championship game. You will see them hugging each other. I love you, like, bro. Right? It's all worth it, like, man. It's like, we're just, I love you, man. It's because we don't bond through talking. We bond through doing something we care about with other men who care about the same thing. And what's funny is even when we're doing that thing, it's not like we're like sharing our feelings, but we'll show up the next day and we'll do that exact same thing. Can you imagine mm-hmm. California, like a surfing group? Yeah. 
Yeah. You see, after after the Apologia debate, Jacob Hansen and Hayden Carroll, they came backstage, ripped off their shirts. Carden and Quaku and I were there. We were like, yeah. We were throwing champagne <laughs> all over each other. It was crazy. We were crying. It was amazing. Yeah. It was, amazing. It, was, it was pretty wild, man. I'm sad I missed out yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. So I'm loving this. I'm loving this. You know, we only got five more minutes left okay, here, okay. unfortunately. Well, now, hold on. All right. All right. I, this parade is going on too long, and I got to rain on it. I've wanted to take my boys on a hike for four years. One hike. Four years. I have three boys. I just want to go on one hike. And I've been in a bishopric for four years. When the heck am I going to take my boys on a hike? I can't take my boys on a hike. I'm slammed. Okay, okay. Let me let me address this. Let me address this. There is something I will say about this. I think that this sort of a program would discontinue other programs. We would have to, if this really were to take off, it would be like, one night a month, you have a ward mutual activity. The other Wednesday nights, you can dedicate to those like interest group activities. They're still getting together with Latter Day Saint youth and things like that. I mean, I, now I'm not I'm not saying it has to be that way, but there would have to be some adjustment. But the basic idea is that your interface with the church and and the activities that we have, instead of forcing activities on the ward level on people who have very, very different interests and trying to find something that everyone's going to enjoy, which is a dang near impossible task, and we all know that, what we do is we zoom up to the stake level where there's more people and even potentially a regional area level to put these on at. And the idea is, is that we then get together saints who actually have shared interests. Dude, a regional a SoCal regional, like an LA County Mormon surf team would explode. <laughs> like, because there's, there's maybe only like five to 10 dudes that actually can surf in my stake are good at it and would go out of their way to maybe, you know, organize, Hey, it's high tide in these three weekends. I can, I can say this. I, I don't want to rain on that one. I just, because I know that anyone who's a surfer is going to know this. One of the challenges with surfing is that if you show up somewhere with 30 guys that are going to paddle into the water all together, like it's kind of a big no, no in the surf community to like show up at a spot. No, with, like, you, a you can, there's plenty, dude, there's plenty of coastline, bro. There's 15 <laughs> hidden surf spots that everybody knows about. There's 15 different staircases. Surfers of all my- are really, surfers have a culture. And some yeah. of these surfs, they have a culture of like, keep your spots quiet. Just the, just yeah, to inside. Yeah, but look, we, public surf look, do they want to rumble? Do we, they want to rumble with a bunch of dudes like us? No, I'm just kidding. So, no, but, Tom, but, but there are things Tom. like that. Think about a regional, like lacrosse thing. Like we're going to put together, like you can sign up and all of a sudden there are six lacrosse teams that are going to play in this round robin tournament or whatever. Uh, and it's done at the regional level because that's where you can get enough people to actually form this thing into a coherent organization. Or we're I mean, actually going to make that cool sculpture and get it dedicated and bronzed for, I don't know, some founding father of our city in Central Park. And then it's actually a bunch of Mormon artists that do it. And it's like, wow, none of us have ever seen a stake that has harnessed the power of its artistic men. Oh, that or 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 like I mean, think about this. Musicians. Uh, what about Jonah? Like, why? Why? Uh, like, how? There's a VA hospital. Could you imagine right having now. a yeah. band like Jam Night, where you just get a bunch of people together who know how to play instruments, and you yeah. all just start like rocking out, playing together, like, yeah. and you put that on every once in a while for this guys who like love sounds music. Wicked, dude! It'd be amazing. Imagine we have a, a steak show choir. That goes around to community events and actually performs like at the, the, I don't know, the ribbon cutting at the freaking new mall they put together. And all of a sudden you have the show choir there that sings the national okay, anthem. But now all of us are thinking though, now again, we're 35 minutes in and we only got a couple minutes left. What is stopping us? I'll tell you exactly what's stopping us. Liability. This- uh, yes. Every time I've had a good idea, I've told it to my bishop and he said, oh, that's a great idea. Let me talk to stake president. That stake president says, oh, that's a great idea. Let me talk to my priesthood leader. He calls up his area 70. That area 70 says, wow, that's a great idea. Let me talk to my priesthood leader. Oh, and by that, I mean the lawyer in the church office building that answers the hotline that all the area 70s call when they don't know if we can do something. And then this person with no priesthood keys and no priesthood stewardship ends up saying what? Oh, a lacrosse tournament? 
uh yeah like i've never heard of that before and i don't think our insurance covers it so like no just tell them no like sorry and that's what i'm saying the if the people team? if the people of zion can't figure out with the brilliant attorneys that we have in the church which is like every other state president if the brilliant attorneys in our church can't figure out how to create a liability form for people to sign before they participate in these activities and if we're so afraid of lawyers that we won't build zion like we got a real problem but, like hands. i actually it's think that's the culture of the leadership of our church though like i think right now like i am my heart soars and i want to see this happen and i've suggested many things very much like this and even put in hundreds of hours my of of my own work per year trying to incorporate all of these programs and nearly all of them past the stake level every single one of them that has risen past the stake level has been shot down by the church office building so let me let me tell us let me tell a story about this. So once upon a time, uh, Franklin D. Richards was mission president up in the Pacific Northwest, and the missionaries were going out and they were preaching to people, and they were teaching all kind of different things. And he said, "There's got to be a better way." He's just a mission president. He's not, you know, he wasn't a lawyer or whatever. He was just off on an island on his own. He didn't have the church office building at a text message. Okay, this is back you know a hundred years ago, and he said, "There's got to be a better way to teach lessons." And so he wrote the missionary discussions. And they were very successful and he gave them to his missionaries and that's what they did. And they did it for years in their mission. They had formalized missionary discussions, six of them. And you know, the ones I'm talking about, because we all use those on our missions. And then the church said, Hey, these are really good. We should do this. And it, and it spread worldwide. Th that was not a bureaucrat at the top who thought of this and distributed it to everybody and forced because the church bureaucracy was a guy the church bureaucracy didn't exist back then jonah it was started in 1977 yes, right. by spencer yes. w kimball that was a better system because the priesthood authority was not interrupted these area 70s don't end up getting to call the apostle that's in charge of them yeah or the general correct. authority that's a part charge of them there's this big speed bump and this massive gatekeeping that happens by the church office building because just as jacob hansen says you need to ask is this a people problem or a process problem right now we have a process problem in the church of jesus christ latter-day saints of an interrupted chain of priesthood leadership that's interrupted by unelected un dare i say in many cases interested there's many that are interested in their holy decent people in every single way okay but we cannot put our spiritual uh, success in the hands of somebody who does not have spiritual keys, but that's actually what we're doing in the church right now. Yeah, but I think, so what I, we, think yeah. I think though that we can that a possible solution to that is to create enough people that that see the vision of this. Because here is the vision, okay, at the core of this, the core of it is the idea of human connection. Everyone yes. feels disconnected. Everybody wants community. Everyone wants to belong. And that is not an issue. In, the, in fact, we are the ones in the church who have something that everybody wants. They mm -hmm. want community. They want connection. And we, if we can offer that to the world through these sort of interest-based yes. programs, you won't have to go and look for people to teach. They will come waltzing into the door. And I'm not, and I'm not, this is not a missionary ploy. I'm no, saying no, that they will be a natural ask, outcome. How are you it. able to pull this off? Like, this is you, amazing. I love this. How are you able to pull this off? Where has this been my vision. entire life? You got to yeah. talk about yeah. the vision. I we think, I think, create com Zion communities of people who actually connect with each other through shared passion that also puts Latter-day Saints together doing things they're passionate about together. Okay, then and two minutes, will join with us as we do it. In two minutes, Jacob, how do you get over the hurdle of the church office building bureaucrat that is going to shut you down and say no when your stake president says, I love this idea, Jacob. I want to do this. I want to change so that instead of meeting every Wednesday and having only a 50% participation rate amongst my young men, I'm going to get rid of two of those nights and if I'm just going to have special. He's going to have to call the church office building and we all know exactly what they're going to say. So how do we overcome that hurdle? You go to what the brethren are actually looking for. The brethren want to create. They know that there are issues in the church that need to be addressed. They know that so, we, so need he has to get, to we need to increase missionary the work. The brethren need to. Well, need no, but to, hold on. I just I want us to be honest here that, you know, that for him to implement that stake president, for him to implement this, as you've prescribed three nights, three of the four Wednesdays a month 
special interest or uh, what is it called? Unique interest group or whatever. And then one, let's just say it was 50-50. He was going to cut out two of the Wednesday nights for young men for special interest and then two for uh, just for my ward. You know that would go against the current handbook, which would then make him some rogue bishop who would, we either have to admit that we're asking bishops to subversively build the kingdom and go rogue or... <laughs> We're asking so, the church office building to change, and it shows zero capacity well, think, of change. I think the brethren. I think the change can actually be approved from the very top levels of the church, because I think once the brethren also can see the vision of something like this, right? Once they also can see, wow, you know what? We're we. They know the big picture of what the church is trying to do. It's trying to bring people to Christ and to build Zion. And when they can see somewhere, and they go, you know, what? let's test this out. Let's try this in that stake in Texas. And then that stake in Texas, all of a sudden has all these super positive experiences the brethren will do it but they have it does have to eventually be the brethren that 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 give approval to this stuff we don't uh, we don't ha hold the keys of the kingdom ourselves individually we do have to go up that chain but i agree there is a problem when church bureaucrats that don't hold priesthood keys are the ones who ultimately put the kibosh on it because there's just a well we don't want to upset caesar and and we just want to you know avoid all liability at all costs when it's like look i'll pay my tithing so we can pay the legal fees so that we can make these things happen there's no way there is no way that we can't as a organization do th these kinds of things and come up with some sort of creative solution to get around the barriers that are there yes no I, I, and i mean legal I get barriers. That, but i'm just i'm just saying in 2024 if we were trying to implement this, you haven't convinced me that this could be implemented above book. Well, it yeah, would have like to be could... something a, 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 a state is, president. Is there, is there something is there something that says that we can't have a, a women's uh, adventure group in the stake? No, where, we, they, where we, they go out and do that. No, we could, but we couldn't or, change the, the like. I, I, well, good. I'll just tell the women, you know what? If you don't come to the Wednesday night activity or whatever, that's okay. You guys are going to that okay. yoga group all the time, hanging out. Like, it's it's good. Now, I, again, though, that's kind of asking a bishop and a stake president to go rogue. So le le one last story. When I was okay. elders quorum president in Arizona, I asked my high councilman who was in my elders quorum all the time. I said, hey, look, these guys, they come to this lesson. They listen. They don't even know each other. Can we just have one Sunday where we just eat chicken wings? And he said, no, you can't do that. I said, like, no lesson. No. I mean, we're just going to pray. We're going to just sit and eat chicken wings. These guys never talk to each other. They don't even like know each other. Guys don't. Guys, guys abhor a program. Let's just eat chicken wings. And he said, no. So I waited till there was a Sunday when he wasn't there. By the way, I love this high councilman and we were very good friends and I love him to death. But there was one Sunday when he wasn't there and I didn't know he wasn't going to be there. And I saw he wasn't there. So I left sacrament meeting early, drove to Safeway, purchased a bunch of chicken wings, <gasps> baked them, and then flew to elders quorum. And I laid it out for the elders. And I said, hey, we're going to eat chicken wings today. And they were all like, what's the catch? I said, no catch. We're do, just we not, do we not have and a stewardship? Do we not it was have great. That, that was within your stewardship. That was within yeah, see, your call. But he was breaking the rules again on Good. this then, channel. Then, and Jesus broke the rules. OK, too. then let us just admit that we're asking people to subversively build the kingdom. No, I just hey, think what you're no, doing no, no, no. Saying... I think that there's a higher principle that, that goes above even a church handbook. And I'm fine. I'm fine with the handbook. I'm willing to take the consequences. But I have a funny feeling that the leaders of the church, when they look at something like that and they see the good that comes from it, they're going to be like, you know what, brother? If you did things a little bit around the uh, a little bit around the rules of the typical way we do things, but it brought people to Christ, more power to you. We are not Pharisees that can't do that. But at the same time, if it goes wrong and you mess a bunch of things up and it causes problems <laughs> for the church, then yeah, you better eat that too because that's your fault because they gave you good counsel. Okay, so, so you last use question. Your judgment. Last question here goes to Brittany. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I want chicken wings right now. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, uh, Jacob Hansen has been stirred. His soul has been touched by the possibility of chicken wings, subversively building the kingdom, Jonah Barnes style, <laughs> via chicken wings. What would be the girl alternative in Relief Society for just showing up and just having a bunch of chicken wings? 
What do you mean? I'm sorry. I don't follow the question. Well, like, you know how Jonah said, hey, you know, uh, one day when the high councilman was gone uh-huh. and I knew that we needed to just in order to bond like dudes, yeah. just, you know, f- screw the lesson. We're going to sit around and we're going to eat chicken wings. So we ran to Safeway. He got the oh, chicken so wings. What would and came girls do? Yeah. So what would your dream, you know, screw the lesson. Let's just sit around and do X. What would your X be? There's a soda bar. <laughs> and we all can get different types of soda. Mine would be Diet Coke with some lime, maybe some coconut cream. And I would sit down and we would just talk. That would be perfect. All right. Okay. Awesome. So chicken wings and soda shops. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Hansen is going to revolutionize the church with chicken wings and soda shops, and we will not be able to baptize people fast enough. We won't be able to create brotherhood and fraternity and sisterhood fast enough because the soda will be so lime and coconutty tasty, and the chicken wings will be so hot and spicy that we won't. We will just we'll have to be beating them away with a stick. So anyway, um, yeah, let us know what you guys think. Let's keep the conversation alive. Um, do you think you could see this happening in your stake? Do you think your stake has the leadership, uh, the guts, the gall, the tools and the talent in order to implement this? Uh, do you think Jacob Hansen here is off his rocker and that what he's suggesting is uh, just, you know, um, a pipe dream? Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's keep that conversation going. As always, for this and more, please check us out at Ward Radio. Dot com. I ain't trying to bring you down, but for real, you might as well give up now. Think you got a chance, but I don't see how. Got a real tight grip when I hold that crown.